I don't know if you've had this experience, but so often when I meet a group of new people, somebody always says, oh, did you know Henry is a poet? <laughs> and uh, people give me quizzical looks, uh, as, if, as if they said, oh, you know, Henry and Bill Gloves like to skinny dip in frozen lakes. <laughs> and, and, then, and then the questions come. You know, why are you a poet? Or um, how, how did you begin writing poetry? When did you begin writing poetry? And so my, my answers uh, are probably typical answers. Um, I didn't study much poetry in high school. Uh, I, I don't think um, any of my teachers taught contemporary poetry. Uh, I remember studying a few poems by Robert Frost and Carl Sandburg. But that was about it. Um, but then when I went off to college, my very first uh, professor was a poet who had studied under Robert Lowell. He was the one who introduced me to contemporary poetry and who encouraged me to write. <clears throat> As for why I decided to write poetry, <clears throat> I think basically when I went off to college, it was socially strange, it was academically very intense, and I wanted to go home. And as I was uh, preparing for this reading and looking over a lot of my poems, uh, I go home in a lot of my poems. Bill was talking about examining home in Virginia. Uh, my home was a small farming town in New England near the Berkshire Mountains, um, back in the early 50s, my father bought a little cottage. It had no electricity, no phone. It had a pipe from a shallow well, so gravity brought a little bit of water to the cottage. And then he, he and the rest of us sort of built the house, and then he turned uh, 12 acres that he bought into a Christmas tree farm. So <clears throat> in my poems, as you'll see tonight, I often go back to this, uh, this place. Um, I thought I would begin with a poem about, about my, my son, uh, who was born in Williamsburg about uh, 22 years ago. And he had a hard birth. Um, his heart wasn't working properly, his lungs weren't working properly. Um, my, my wife was sort of out of it. Uh, but I was dealing with doctors coming down from Richmond, and they were all very concerned. They put him in an oxygen tent. They did a lot of uh, tests. Um, but as I was worrying about my son, I went home again. Um, I guess I go back because uh, it's familiar. Uh, I sort of feel secure there. So... This is hard birth. You left your mother stunned on the hospital bed, a shell scoured by breakers, crusted with salt. Hoisting your body by the ankles, the doctor joked you were a chameleon who turned the wrong color. When you wheezed, wind riffled hemlocks by our barn 35 years before. I huffed over crates of white and blue spruce seedlings, Dragged from a nursery's converted hearse. For two cents a tree, I lugged five-gallon buckets heavy with water and peat into fields of wintergreen, chopped wedges with an iron planter, buried tousled roots. It was so quiet I could hear nuthatches scrounge for bugs on maples, sap tick from spigots into pails. The brook sharpened blades of ice on rocks. In the maternity ward, your oxygen tent shivered, shimmered like brook ice. Wires clung to your chest like frozen roots. On your heart monitor, Christmas trees flashed and vanished as if blown by electric wind. All afternoon, I waited for word from doctors about your erratic pulse, paced Lime green halls reeking of Lysol and exhausted breath. 
At home, I bumped into furniture and walls, watched the sun wring its bloody hands in clouds. When the clock clenched its fists on midnight, your heart thudded in a distant room. By your empty crib, I listened to my own breaths coming and going in a field of wintergreen as I tucked in seedlings, hoping they'd take root. growing up, um, my father expected me and my uh, two brothers to go out into the fields and, and plant trees. I actually have many uh, happy memories of doing that. And then we would prune the trees, we would mow around them, we'd mulch them, and then we'd sell them uh, before uh, Christmas. And um, my, my father, um, who was very stubborn, but also very optimistic, uh, kept planting Christmas trees up until he was about 90 or 91. Uh, my father unfortunately died in, in December, but um, it, it, it was a routine, but I think um, it also gave him a reason to live. Um, he loved doing it, and um, we had friends in the small town who would come by year after year for, for decades, and he enjoyed the socializing. He'd meet them, and they'd buy trees, and they, they'd uh, talk. Um, <clears throat> my, my mother was a little bit more skeptical. Um, of course, when he was 91 planting trees, uh, my mother would say things like, well, do you really expect to sell those? Because normally it takes six, seven, sometimes eight years for a tree to grow. Um, and I think my father just ignored the, the question. Uh. <clears throat> so, um, this, this poem is supposed to be a kind of dramatic monologue or, or dialogue. It's supposed to be, or it's based on my, my mother speaking to my father. Um, my, my father uh, wasn't named Will, his name was Henry, but I, I gave him the name Will in the poem. So my mother is saying, <clears throat> Will thinks he's still 30 and can plant an acre of seedlings in an afternoon, even when the sun wilts the strongest black-eyed Susan in the field. Yesterday, he lost so much salt he couldn't sleep. Weak from that bad operation on his hip last summer, his legs knotted up with cramps. I asked why he kept planting Christmas trees when he probably wouldn't be around to sell them. He said they gave him a reason to go on living. I told him all our best friends from church had signed up for rooms at the new retirement home across from the hardware store in town. He said they'd have to drive him there in a hearse. And anyhow, with new spray and lime mulch, he could cut the time to grow a good tree in half. When I went down to tell him it was time to quit, he coughed until his sunburnt face got redder. It's the ragweed, he huffed, waving me away. I need to get these last trees in before this killer heat burns their roots. I told him tomorrow he'd be 89 and the grandkids were coming for a party. He said the rows of spruce could be the candles on his cake, then swung his planter's blade down hard, spit on roots for luck, thrust them in, and stamped the dirt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>